Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar on the Master of Research in the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences for 2021. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, I just want to start with some housekeeping. So if you have any questions throughout the seminar, please do post them in the chat and we can address them. We have a bunch of representatives from our faculty here today that can address your questions. Um, so let's kick off. All right, so today we're talking about our Master of Research program in the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences. So here, and you'll be meeting them at least in the presentation if they don't jump in in this part of the talk. So my name is uh, Jennifer Rowland. I'm the Master of Research Director for the Faculty. Okay, so our Master of Research structure is over two years. So in the first year of the course, you have to do eight research training units at um, in the at the 7,000 level and we have a whole suite of units that are on offer here in the faculty and I'll touch on those in a moment. In the second year of the program of the course uh, you have to complete a research project that spans the entire year but it's about 10 months of actual researching time and then at the end you have to give a talk about your work. Now whether or not you have to deliver different components of uh, assessment tasks during this research year depends on the department that you're situated within the second year. But this uh, second year of the program really involves you being under the uh, supervision of an established and experienced research leader who will direct and support you in your delivery of your research thesis. Now, the way that we structure our program in the faculty aligns very closely with how um, things are run throughout the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences. One of the things I really like about our faculty is the fact that we're very communicative between all of the different courses and programs that we run and we try to work together collaboratively to make sure that you have a really holistic experience in pursuing your research training here in the faculty. In year one of the program you're going to be required to complete at least three required units. Uh, the first one is research communications where you learn about how to write and speak about your research including all the kinds of things that you'll be covering in your uh, second year of the course. Uh, you also need to complete a unit on research foundations. And in this unit, uh, you'll be learning about uh, different types of research that you might undertake, including, um, uh, sorry, including um, quantitative, qualitative, and all the ethical considerations that you need to take into consideration when you're doing your research course. Uh, we also have a research frontiers course that we require you to complete where you're going to be exploring all the different types of research that are get underway within the faculty throughout all of our departments. Uh, this is a slide just showing you all the types of research that we have on offer, all the types of training that we have on offer in year one of the Master of Research program. So those in Plum at the top of the screen, uh, some of the core units that we have that cover research uh, training in general. So we have rotations where you can go through different research groups and experience research firsthand on short little projects that you complete as part of your units. Uh, then we also have a course on pitching your research for funding, which is a very important skill set across the board. We have courses on research design and statistics, which are really useful for most of us, as well as a unit on research project management, a generic unit on research project management. Now, the units that have uh, been outlined here in grey are those that are covering specific research topic areas. So we have units on neuroscience, human disease biology, um, medical research frontiers, um, different things related to biomedical implants and technologies. We have units that focus in on linguistics, cognitive science, epidemiology and health systems, as well as advanced psychology. Now, um, you can explore these units in more detail and I'll show you how you can do that at the end of the session. Uh, we also tend to have four different streams that we run in the faculty. Now you have to complete the core units I'll just see if I can get this marker here that I can highlight that to you with a laser pointer. So you can see there's the communications, the foundations and the frontiers that you have to essentially complete across the board. But if you want to go into psychology, psychology recommends that in the first year you complete more uh, advanced psychology units, including PSYM 7718, although you can fill that out with electives. 
uh, either more psychology or you can tailor it to your specific research needs. In linguistics, they have a more robust uh, requirement for students going into the second year. So they expect you to undertake units in ling linguistics and language related research, research project management, research experiences. And you may also opt to do the PACE unit, which we'll cover in a moment. Now, actually, this section here is where we talk a little bit about the PACE units that we have on offer. So there's a video here from uh, our unit, our team in the High Degree Research Training and Partnerships Office. So I'll just put that on for you now. Uh, I'm start that. Hi, everybody. My name is Catherine Ennis. I'm the HDR Industry Engagement and Placements Manager. And I'm here today with Dr. Juliette Lum, Unit Convener for MRES 7001, PACE for Research Unit. And we'd like to tell you a bit about this internship unit for credit, which you can take in the first year of your Masters of Research. So what does the research unit um, involve? It basically allows you to give the opportunity to undertake research as part of a research team or in community industry settings. And working with a partner organisation or a research team leader, you can identify, design, manage, conduct a research project that aligns with the strategic priorities of that organisation or team. You'll also have your project overseen and guided by a host supervisor, and you'll be supported through a series of academic seminars hosted by the unit convener, Juliet, Dr. Juliet Law. So a couple of key benefits here that we'd like to outline. Um, you can basically help enrich your research capabilities through this unit. It aims to equip you with practical problem solving, research skills such as critical analysis, reflection, and synthesis of complex information problems, concepts, and theories. You can broaden your network. This unit is open to three faculties and you get to meet students that are working in other areas or researching various different disciplines. So it gets you an opportunity to see what else is going on in terms of research outside of your usual um, stream or uh, research stream. And depending on the where you do your placements, you can get to meet um, current researchers in the university or you could work with somebody externally who is in maybe a research organisation or um, an industry partner in private business or in government. The unit also can help you be better prepared for MS Year 2 because you can sometimes use your actual research completed in this unit in your thesis in the second year. So you can take what you've learned, what you've already done, maybe some initial analysis or a literature review, and then use that in year two. There's also opportunities to expand uh, your opportunities post-graduation. So there's many opportunities generally for a, uh, a research oriented career, and many of our graduates choose to work in a non-academic setting. So doing a research placement can help build your resume and develop your career overall. I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Juliette Long now. Thanks, Catherine. So that gives you a little bit of a taste of what are the benefits of the unit, but you might be wondering what's the workload involved in this. So most of the um, unit is spent doing the internship itself. So you get 100 hours working in that authentic research context, whether that's in a lab or in a research team on campus, it might be in a different faculty from you, um, or it could be outside of the university um, in industry somewhere. So most of the unit work will be spent in the internship. We do have five classes uh, where you do meet other students and you um, we prepare you for the internship. And uh, we also have the uh, online uh, discussions as well where you can share about what you're learning. The semester that it's running is semester two. So if you're starting your MRES in year one, you will have already had, sorry, in semester one, you will have already had a few units up your sleeve and hopefully you'll be able to use those skills in the internship. If you're starting in the middle of the year, you can take this unit straight away. Um, if you're wondering about how do you find an internship or are you just placed in one, the answer is that uh, you can bring your own or you can apply for one that we find. So Catherine and I work very hard to find a range of internships that we think will be um, interesting for you as well as meeting the learning outcomes of this unit and you can apply just as you would apply for a, a job um, and a lot of our students do um, use that option as well. So uh, as I said Catherine has already outlined some of the benefits and things that you could take away from this unit but don't just take it from us here are some student testimonials from students last year 
um, who took this unit. And I'll just point out that the photos that you see in these slides are actual interns who've taken this unit um, with their supervisors. So they'll come away with uh, increased confidence and increased employability after taking this unit from the networking as well as um, learning from the reflections that they do. So learning about themselves, what are their strengths, what are their areas of development and how the whole research process works. So what does work, what doesn't work, why doesn't it work? Um, it's really good to be able to um, be forced to reflect, I guess, and um, to make explicit what you're learning while you're doing. Um, another great thing is that you work alongside um, scholars and re researchers and not just as their students, but as um, a colleague, as their team member. Um, and also you get known, you might get known um, around your department and have other opportunities for research assistant work later. So that can be a really good thing as well. So I'm sure you're all keen to find out a little bit more about this unit. Yeah, so if you want to get in touch with us, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Here are our details. You're welcome to contact Juliet or I on these email addresses or our phone numbers. We can send you a flyer which has a lot more information about the unit. Um, we'd be delighted to hear from you. So please get in touch if you'd like to hear more. Great. Um, can you still hear me? Yes. Uh, I wanted to add to that that um, we also have rotation units that we run within the faculty because in our faculty it's a really important thing that you build your network from the very beginning, from the get-go. If you get that opportunity to gain experience by training with researchers that are established within the faculty before you actually commit to a full year project, it gives you the opportunity to explore different types of research that are taking place within the faculty and decide what kind of direction you really want to take in your second year. I wish I'd had this opportunity when I was going through. Instead, I did an honours, so I went straight from my undergraduate into my honours year, and I didn't get that opportunity to really try out different research groups and see what they were like to work with. It all turned out okay, but it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, so you can do that through rotation one, rotation two, or through the PACE unit. But if you take the PACE unit within our faculty, we generally encourage you to take uh, some kind of research experience outside of the university through that unit if possible. And there are lots of different opportunities that they put forward each semester that they run the unit that you can participate in those experiences. Um, now I've got this slide up here at the moment. It's a database that you might want to look at when you're thinking about the type of research that you'd like to pursue and sort of explore and see whether anything interests you. Uh, it's a general database that's used across the entire university. So it's uh, up there on the screen. You can see it's researchers.mq.edu.au. Uh, in this database, you can look for topics. You can explore what's happening in the different faculties. Uh, you can look at what's happening in the different departments and see what kind of papers are coming out, what kind of research topics are being explored, who's working there, what they're doing, all of that sort of thing. So I do encourage you, if you're thinking about going into research training, if you could uh, explore that database and have a think about what you're interested in. Because when you do put in your application for the EMRES, you need to provide us with a general summary of the kind of research that you're interested in pursuing. And it should align with the kind of things that are already happening within the university. Okay, next slide. Now this is a general overview of the kind of thing that you'll be doing in the second year of the Master of Research within our faculty and we've tailored this to suit the discipline area that you might be in and how the people that are running the course within your discipline area feel you need to be trained. So it's very tailored to the discipline that you'll be working in. And uh, some of the things that you might be needing to do in the second year while you're pursuing your research project is a research proposal so you can outline at the beginning exactly what you're going to be doing. Uh, some of the departments require that you give an introductory talk and that's just another opportunity to get feedback from your peers and from your colleagues about whether or not your research investigation is valid and robust enough to, it to see you through your entire project. It's a great opportunity for you to get feedback about the kind of things that you're aiming to do in your project. Uh, we have a Frontiers essay. So as part of the Masters of Research Year 2, you will write a thesis at the end and that will constitute 90% of your mark but 10% of your mark needs to come from other tasks. So depending on the department that you're in, 
uh, five or ten percent of your mark might come from some of these activities and in some of the departments the frontiers essay is used for five percent of your mark uh, and that frontiers essay is an opportunity for you to explore troubleshooting approaches that you might use in the project that you put forward, alternative approaches that you could potentially take, what kind of things could go wrong, uh, what kind of um, technologies are available for you to employ if those things do go wrong. So it's a really great opportunity to develop your skills as a researcher and it's very specific to your project. Um, we encourage you to complete a literature review around halfway through your candidature just so you're not freaking out at the end and trying to get everything done at the last minute. It's only about five to 10 pages in general for the Master of Research thesis. Um, depending on the department that you're in, you will have training and seminars that take place throughout the year. And then ultimately you will deliver a thesis and then a thesis defense where you give a 15 minute talk about the work that you've been doing over the course of your Master of Research year two. Um, there's a whole big spiel about the kinds of things that you learn in semester three and four in MRES year two, and ultimately, it's about you guys extending your knowledge of research innovations in your discipline. You survey the current literature in your field of interest. You engage with the latest research methods in your field. You receive training in project management and plan a major research project. And you complete that significant individual research project of your own design that you work on together with your supervision team. Okay. Right, so I just wanted to introduce you to our departments. We have eight departments in our faculty. They are the Australian Institute of Health Innovation, headed by Professor Geoffrey Braithwaite, or AIHI. Uh, there's the Department of Biomedical Sciences, headed up by Professor Helen Rizos. We've got the Department of Clinical Medicine, headed up by Professor Vincent Lamb. We've got the Department of Cognitive Sciences, headed up by Professor Genevieve MacArthur. We've got the Department of Health Professions, headed up by Associate Professor Verity Pacey. We've got Health Systems and Populations, and it's headed up by Professor Janakia Min. We've got the Department of Linguistics, headed up by Yanwi Kruger. We've got the Department of Psychology, headed up by Professor Eric Reichel. And when you're looking at that database, the researchers.mq.au database that I shared with you earlier, you can look up any of these departments and see what kind of work is taking place within their remit. Now, we have a whole lot of representatives that are there to support you through your Master of Research. So these are departmental directors at HDR or Master of Research directors or advisors that are available for you. Uh, and uh, the same person that heads up the, the department, Verity Pacey, is also heading up the Master of Research training in health professions. Associate Professor Rebecca Mitchell is coordinating HDR in the Australian Institute of Health Innovations. We've got Associate Professor Paul Soman, who's heading up HDR in the Department of Cognitive Sciences. Uh, we've got Associate Professor Seema Mershashi, who's heading up HDR in Health Systems and Populations. We've got Professor Stuart Graham heading up HDR in the Department of Clinical Medicine. We've got Associate Professor Simon Bogue in Psychology. We've got Dr. Dana Turner in Biomedical Sciences and Dr. Cassie Liade in Linguistics. Now, uh, you'll see to the right there, there's also myself and Associate Professor Mark Connor, who I think is on this call today, but he might be able to step in at some point to introduce himself. And uh, Mark is the Associate Dean of High Degree Research, and I am the Director of the Master of Research. So we are here to support you in your high degree research training in the faculty. Now, another thing I wanted to emphasize to you all is that we take our community very seriously here in our faculty and we put a lot of work into trying to build a positive and supportive community for all of our staffs and students in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. And I have to say, it's one of the most um, lovely communities I've ever had the opportunity to work in. Uh, our HDR students have developed their own uh, organization called MedSoc, it's a medical student society. Uh, and they are very active in getting together and providing that support network that will really make a difference as you pursue HDR training. Uh, they have a lot of activities that they run, including social events like bake-offs, movie nights. Um, they have uh, barbecues, Christmas in July, all sorts of things like that. Sometimes they have end of year events. 
Of course, all of this has been a little bit low key since COVID kicked in, but they have not given up and they still do run socially distanced events and such so that we can maintain those social connections that we need so that we can survive going through HDR training. Um, we also have a seminar series that our Medical Student Society run called Beyond Academia, where they invite speakers that have finished HDR training at the university and gone on to non-academic roles, which is a really great thing for you to sort of see the kind of options that you have beyond the academic sector. And they also host wellbeing seminars so that you can get an idea about the kinds of support net networks that are in place throughout the university to help you get through your candidature. Okay, that's all I really wanted to talk about with regards to the Master of Research in our faculty. Uh, you're most welcome to get in touch with our administrative team on fmhhs.hdr.mq.edu.au or you can also now tweet us on fmhhs underscore hdr. I think it's that, it might be underscore the mq as well. I've got to double check that for you. <laughs> Sorry, I've just made this Twitter account today. Um, but certainly email us through the mq.edu.au email there and we can get back to you in response to any inquiries. But I believe that we now have a question and answer time that myself and some of our other representatives might be able to answer your questions for you. So there's a question for Paul, probably. Um, is it recommended to do honours then MRES for psychology, cognitive science? Um, well, certainly that's not, I mean, um, It really depends what 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 you want to do. I mean, the the honors program is necessary if you're going to go on to the um, clinical aspects of of psychology. Um, it's not needed to do honors certainly for cognitive science, and we don't offer honors in cognitive science. Um, so if your if your um, goal is to do research, um, high degree research. Um, a PhD, for example, then MRES is the way to go. Although, yeah. how does the course structure change if you do an honours year in psychology and then apply for the MRES? So, I guess if you do an honours year in psychology, you would automatically be uh, entered into the first, uh, second year of the MRES assuming you did well enough to make it into second year. So uh, you would, so Sarah, Sarah has asked that question. So yeah, if you did honours in psychology, you could go straight into the second year of the MRES and then after that into the PhD. So someone's asking about the entry requirements, the GPA requirements for uh, entry to the MRES. So the requirements that we list are not absolute requirements. If you can make a case, uh, you might be able to be admitted if your GPA is lower uh, than advertised. But in general, there would have to be um, significant circumstances or that you could pre present some other, other evidence of your achievement uh, to get admission. I hope that answers your question, Marion. So Kendall, so this is one for Jen. I've heard it, are they disappearing faster than we can they answer? They are disappearing. Them? Are they being answered by somebody? Oh, I answered that one by text. Ah. Uh. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Paul. That's all right. Uh, this is another one for you. If I'm specialising in cognitive science, can I choose from the 24 credit points worth of 700 level subjects in non-cog size subjects, for instance, psychology or even other faculties? Short answer, yes, but I'd recommend having a chat with uh, me or someone else in cognitive science. But yes. yes. 
So, so I have to sign off on all of the subject selection forms for the faculty. So it's, a, it's very strongly encouraged that you have a meeting. I guess at the moment it would probably be a Zoom meeting where we talk about your subject selections. And if you're talking specifically about the department that you want to specialise for, then I would definitely put you in touch with, if it's CogSci, I would put you in touch with Paul to have a chat with him as well. But um, there is no rule that you can't take units from outside of our faculty. And ultimately you can design your own program beyond the required units that you needed to take. So Bianca has asked, well, what are the differences between doing an MRes in FMHHS compared to the Faculty of Science and Engineering? She's interested in medical science. Well, we do medical science. It's, I won't say it's all we do, but that's, that's our core competency, which is not the core competency of the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Um, I guess I would suggest find an area you're interested in, Bianca. Kind of talk to us, if you like. Talk to people in science about where it is you want to go and find the supervisors who are most likely to support that journey in either science or in medicine, health and human sciences. So we expect to hear from you. We, we, we make a, a course booklet that you can review. Now it's in, in a digital form this year. This is a previous year's one. But in the course booklet, it outlines all of the units that we have on offer in our faculty. Right, so you can actually email the fmhhs.hdr email address and they can respond to you with an attachment of that course booklet for you to peruse. So you can gauge whether the units that we're offering in the year one of the MRAs match the kind of thing you're interested in. Uh, and also you can look at the PURE database, the researchers MQ database that I showed you earlier to see if there's any research interest in our faculty that float your interest, yeah? Okay, so Pritam is interested in doing an internship with the CSIRO during her MRES or her MPH research year two. Can we make that happen? I think we'll have to get back to you about that. Please, we'll have a chat. I think that's one maybe for uh, Seema. If you can reach out to Seema Mashashi and talk to her about that, because she's your departmental director of HDR. She, she would be your first port of call. Right, so Kendall, is the MRES degree at MQ quite different to other universities? Um, I think the MRES at Macquarie is a relatively unique combination of the BPhil and the MRES. So there's sort of the, the advanced disciplinary content as undergraduate units and then the, the one year research program where you get, or the one year of research where your thesis is externally examined by two examiners, that is fairly unusual. Um, and it was, you know, a purpose design program that the university is very enthusiastic about. It's, I guess, different from almost everywhere else in Australia in that our MRES is our main PhD entry pathway. And you can't start a PhD at Macquarie without having a degree that's equivalent to a Master's of Research. So we've really tried to embrace the model which is common overseas where students starting a PhD have master's level training rather than honours level training. So to that degree, yeah, it's, it fits uniquely in our uh, HDR pathway and it's a degree that's been purpose designed to be a standalone research degree as well as to prepare people uh, for a PhD. Is the cost of the MRES equivalent to other master's degrees? I guess I'm not sure Barbara, where you're coming from, whether it's within Australia or overseas. Uh, the first year of the Masters of Research is an undergraduate degree and has a HEX liability. The second year of the Masters of Research is a research degree and there is no fee liability for uh, Australian citizens or permanent residents because it's a, it's a research degree funded by the government. For international students, the MRES is expensive. I think is the best I can say to that. Uh, so what are the benefits of doing an MRES over honours at other universities? I guess it depends on, I mean, an MRES offers uh, a two-year experience. You get 
a lot more advanced disciplinary content through your coursework. So you're going to be better prepared if you do want to go on and do a PhD uh, because you'll be building on your knowledge as well as doing a research project that ends up being more substantial than an honours research project uh, and which is peer reviewed by people external to the university. So um, in general, an MRES thesis is a more serious undertaking than an honours degree. Uh, but I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you want to come to do a PhD at Macquarie, you need a master's equivalent. An honours degree will only get you to MRES too. If you want to do a PhD elsewhere, then an honours degree uh, may well be sufficient. So we think it prepare, we think an MRES prepares people better for a career in research than an honours degree, uh, but they're not exactly equivalent uh, because obviously an honours degree is one year. In general, people probably take longer to do their PhD after an honours degree, whereas the MRES is two years, but you're almost certainly going to be done with your PhD within three years. Um, the other thing is that the MRES, did you already say the MRES is a higher level than the honours? Well, an honours is an undergraduate degree, yeah, the MRES is yeah. a, a level nine degree. Mm. Um, would it be possible to be admitted without submitting any letter of recommendation? Um, I guess that would depend on um, whether you would, I mean, we, we're we looking, we don't need letters of recommendation per se for admission uh, to the MRES, but we like to have references associated with scholarships. Um, can someone speak a bit more about overseas international exchanges during the MRES? Overseas and international exchanges are certainly, I'm going to say, theoretically possible during the MRES, but obviously right now uh, everything is on hold uh, because no one can travel anywhere. But yes, if you can find a supervisor with a relationship with a laboratory or a research group overseas, it's absolutely possible to spend six months of your research year at an overseas institution. Um, so, you know, that, that really depends on what the research project is that you want to do uh, and what sort of connections your supervisor has. So if you're looking for someone to work with, I guess that's something that you need to ask them about. Is a scholarship available if we don't apply for the MRES PhD bundle and only for MRES Year 2? There are MRES Year 2 scholarships, absolutely. Um, but to, do, to enter into MRES Year 2, you would have to uh, show equivalence to the Bachelor of Philosophy. Uh, so that would normally be an honours degree in Australia. Um, or internationally, that could be a coursework master's degree. So to enter the year two MRES, you need to um, show that you're ready for that uh, independent research project. But yes, there are scholarships available for MRES too, for both domestic and international students. Um, for any international students uh, watching, our next international scholarship round is closes the middle of next year. So there won't be any international student admissions uh, through competitive scholarship rounds until 2022. The 2021 round is closed and offers have been made. So uh, there's no pathway for quite some time for international students. Um, so yes, there are, there's a few, I mean, there are a few scholarships, a few questions more about international students and scholarships. Uh, potentially some supervisors at Macquarie will have international scholarships available for MRES students. Uh, so if there's someone that you're interested in working with, you can ask them whether they have allocated scholarships. As I said, the general competitive scholarships uh, which are open to all comers at the university, they don't, um, the next round won't be awarded for about 12 months. And there are occasionally special, specialist schemes uh, that vary from country to country. Look on the Macquarie Scholarships website and see what you can find there.
So doing an honours and a two-year MRes would be an unusual move um, if you successfully uh, managed to negotiate honours then we don't think that you need to redo the first year um, of the MRes, unless it was a very long time ago uh, or potentially in a completely different area of, of inquiry. So normally someone who completes a good honours degree at an Australian university is admitted straight into the second year of the MRes. So Kendall is, is very keen. His recommendations for current undergraduates are to prepare for MRes research. Well, the best thing you can do, I think, is to find out what it is in terms of research that's happening at Macquarie that you're interested in. So look at the people who are lecturing you, see if anything that they're talking to you about inspires you, and then go and talk to them. Any academic is going to be more than happy uh, to talk to someone who's interested in pursuing an MRes down the track with them. So really the best thing to do is to find out what you're interested in. There are also in some courses and certainly some in our faculty, the opportunities to do research placements in labs. Um, Catherine uh, also mentioned the PACE program and Juliet mentioned PACE. You can do PACE units as an undergraduate, uh, which could include a research placement in, a, in one of the labs. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested, or, or indeed within a research group, it doesn't have to be a laboratory. So if you're interested in doing an MRes, you know, introduce yourself to people. Try and get an idea of what it's like uh, to be working in their group or to be working in the lab. And you can do that either through your course, through PACE, uh, or even summer scholarships. But just start talking to people. Uh, and of course, you know, get the highest GPA you can is the other helpful piece of advice. Okay. Any more? Questions? Is there a deadline for applications? Jen. I was just looking at that. Hang on. I was just double checking. The Twitter doesn't have MQ at the end, Mark, just so okay. you know. Um, yeah, I think the deadline's the end of October. Yeah, I, I think we were talking about it in the last meeting that we had, weren't we? Um, I, I'm just going to double check it for you now. If Kate's online, she might know. Um, yeah, so the, the details of when the deadline for applications for the MRS2 uh, would be available on the Macquarie website. I'm pretty sure it's October 31st. If you happen to be a little bit later than that, um, certainly if you, as a domestic student, we could certainly see what we can do. Because obviously we're always trying to fit as many people in as we can. Um, yeah. it's, and it's important to remember the MRS2 starts on January 1st, basically. So it's not a, a February start or March start like everything else. Okay, hang on. Yep, 31st of October for domestic scholarships for PhD MRes Year 2 round for 2021. Um, 30th of November for domestic BPhil MRes applications if they don't care if they get a Year 2 scholarship. So if you're applying directly to Year 2 and you want to be considered for a scholarship, it's the 31st of October. If you're going into the BPhil, um, for everyone, it's the 30th of November if you're a domestic student. Um, international MRES applications are due, were due, <laughs> on the 15th of September for next year. Hmm. Sorry, the dates, 
often change, so I never have them directly in my brain. And as Mark said, uh, you know, it's great if you could get your, you'll definitely be processed efficiently if you get your application in on time, but we can potentially consider later applicants. Mark, did you want to speak to Mariam or are you writing back? I'm directly? writing, sorry, I'm writing to Mariam right now. Okay. Yeah, the, to me, the important part of, of thinking about an MRES is really finding someone that you're interested in working with. And the MRES too is usually a bit of a tryout of that relationship. Um, well, it is. No, I'm yeah. laughing because he's written the FATS track. I know, Kendall. <laughs> the FATS track for a PhD. Well, um, <laughs> I'm not sure what fast track for PhD actually means. Um, I guess we would argue that when you come out of an MRES, uh, you've usually spent 12 months in the lab or group that you're going to continue doing research with. And so all of the things that you would normally be learning at the beginning of your PhD, um, like how to actually do this kind of research to apply the techniques are all done. If your MRES has gone well, you've already come up with a research question, which you will probably extend into your PhD. You've got a reasonable grasp of the literature. Uh, you've probably even got some uh, preliminary data uh, that is going to, that you can easily build on for your PhD. And so people who do MRES 2 and then move to PhD, we've got data on this uh, at Macquarie, are much more likely to finish their PhD and finish their PhD on time than uh, people who started their PhD without an MRES. So that was people um, sort of from before the MRES started at Macquarie. So it's, it's, I mean, the, the system that we've got at Macquarie is a little bit like the system uh, that is very common in the United States where you spend 18 months getting yourself set up for your PhD. And in many places you ended up with a master's at the end of that, then there's a barrier and you transition to the PhD. Um, so really we're offering, you could look at it, that we're offering a sort of an integrated program of five years of study with coursework, a thesis project, and then into your PhD. So five years, two degrees, disciplinary expertise, um, and you'll be very good at writing theses. So Mariam, there's a question about visas and that's not a question that any of us can answer, um, I'm afraid. So uh, any questions about visas and studying during the MRES? Uh, perhaps the OHDRTP might be able to answer it, but uh, certainly we can't offer any advice on that. It's the email they should contact in HDRTP. Uh, I think it might be... I think it's up on the wall here. Maybe HDR Skull. Kate Roth, excellent. Jesus. You're muted, Kate. Can't hear you, Kate. I think she's talking. She's talking, but no one's listening. She's pretending to talk. You've got to muck around with your, um, you test your audio, I think. It might be 
going through a different mic. She might be typing now. <laughs> HDR Connect, okay, yep. So it's hdrconnect at mq.edu.au. So I'm gonna type that back to you, Marion, just so you have that one handy. You can't hear me? I hear you now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that explains why you couldn't hear my answer to the application deadline before. <laughs> sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh. I think our, and our questions are dwindling. They are, but we've still got 30 people here. Does anyone have any more questions? Look, I encourage everybody just to drop an email to fmhhs.hdr at mq.edu.au and they can send you out the course booklet that we put together. And that's a great place for you to sort of browse through the units that we have on offer just within our faculty. Um, we used to have a really great site where you could see all the units across the whole university, Kate, but I don't think we offer that site anymore. I think it's disappeared in, in some reiteration of the web page. It's in course finder, isn't it? Pardon me? It's in Course Finder. Yeah, so you can search for courses, but it's, you can't, like, there's no place that you can just browse through all the MRES units in one place. Uh, not, not all together. They're no. organised by course and faculty. Yeah. So that's why we put together our course book, so you can just see everything that we offer within our faculty in one location. We can't find the course booklet online, Bianca. Yes, that's right. Um, that's because we haven't put it online. We can email it to you. Uh, so I'm just gonna type in the answer to you, the email address that you can just touch base with and just say, could you possibly send me a copy of the course booklet for MRES and they will return the email with the course booklet attached. Okay, um, Jacqueline has asked, uh, I mentioned that you should look up the database on the current research in the faculty. Would you have any specific tips on what one should specifically look for? I have many tips, Jacqueline. How long have you got? <laughs> um, uh, maybe you could elaborate more, in more detail about what exactly you mean. Uh, if you're looking for someone that you wanna work with, you might look at their profile and see what kind, different researchers' profiles and see what kind of work they're publishing. You can search up by topic. Uh, you can search up the publications that are coming out of the faculty. You can even look at what kind of funding people are getting. Um, if I was in your position and I was looking at the kind of research that I'd want to do in my future, I would just browse and see if anything caught my attention in terms of topic and content. And you know, if I found it to be an interesting uh, research area, and then I might make a list of people and I would reach out and contact them and talk to them about their research. Uh, so, that's what I did when I was an honours student looking for a lab. So there's a couple of different places to go and look. There's most departments will have a web page and there's a faculty web page, but there's also a website called uh, researchers.mq.edu.au and that has the research profile of everyone who is a research supervisor at Macquarie. And you can search that either by name or by topic. So, you know, if you were to type in, for example, coincidentally, cannabis, um, you get the profile of at least seven different people at Macquarie who are doing research on cannabis. And so, you know, that's, that's a good way to find, to find people. And some of those people will be postdocs, some of them will be students and some of them will be supervisors. Um, and so that's research, that's researchers.mq.edu.au.
No, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure I can pronounce that name. Thank you. <laughs> thanks to everyone for coming to this webinar and please get in touch with any of us uh, over the next little while to find out what you need to know. All right. Thanks, everyone.